All righty, moving into our next section here, covering custom unlocks and the new DJI FlySafe portal. So you'd want to use a custom unlock for a blue authorization zone. If you weren't going to be doing live unlocking or like to plan ahead and have the unlocking certificate already downloaded and enabled, a red restricted zone or the gray altitude zone, you can see on the screenshot to the right here, you can go on the FlySafe map and check out the altitude zone. You'd only need a unlocking certificate in this case if you're flying over 60 meters. What the process we'll be covering in this section here is creating an account on the FlySafe portal, adding drones and pilots, and creating the unlock requests. Those requests will then be reviewed by the FlySafe team, and then you will need to download and enable the unlocking certificate on the drone itself. The website of the FlySafe portal is fly-safe.dji.com. When you navigate there, you'll be prompted to log in or create a DJI account. DJI account is what you log in with on the DJI flight application that you may be using. So you can just go ahead and use that account or create one if needed. The portal is still being optimized for mobile devices. So I would recommend using a laptop or desktop computer. Have done a few unlocks on an iPad, but you can tell the layout is still not optimized for mobile. So recommend using the computer. After logging in, you'll be prompted to click on the authentication application, and that will take you to the user center and background certification tab. From there, you'll wanna select the applicable account type. So basically a recreational would be a personal account, organization for enterprise, and then government being the third option there. Selecting organization account in this case, you'll then select your country or region and click next. Here, be prompted with a form with basic information. Uh, the only one to note here would be on the bottom, there is a file section, and that's essentially asking for a letter stating that drones are being used for commercial purposes on your organization letterhead. As an organization enterprise account, you're more likely to have your application accepted and licenses will have a longer validity period. And once again, nothing special there you can simply state uh, the above within the documents. So after submitting that information, you'll be prompted to verify the phone number provided. We'll need to click on the get SMS code first, and then you'll be able to enter your verification code to confirm. After that confirmation, you'll see the background certification is completed. And then on the left side, can go into device management or pilot management next. We'll check out device management first. You'll tap on the blue button with the plus to add a new device, enter the flight controller serial number, select the aircraft model from the drop down menu, and then can add a device name. If you have a nickname that you use for the drone, uh, just for easier tracking for yourself within the portal instead of trying to remember flight controller serial numbers. You can also download an Excel template. The first column, you'll want to add the flight controller serial number. The second one, the device type. Uh, make sure you type the device type the same as is shown within the manual drop down menu within the portal. And then the third, just being your custom name for the aircraft. We'll then upload that Excel file to fill in your devices within the portal. Circling back on the flight controller serial number, to find that, you're gonna to wanna to connect your drone, remote controller, and mobile device if you're not using a smart controller. Go to manual flight within DJI Pilot or just open up the camera view. Tap on the three dots in the type top right to open the menu. Tap on the three dots in the submenu. See that highlighted in green in the image on the right side here. Tap on about within the menu and then scroll down to the flight controller serial number, which is from the drone. So just once again, we'll need to have the drone connected to the remote controller in order to get that. To find the flight controller serial number with ground station RTK and the Phantom 4 RTK, 
So again, connect the drone, RC, and mobile device if applicable. Go to the menu, select the aircraft, and then view the flight controller serial number. For pilots, select pilot management on the left side of the user center, add a new pilot. This is gonna be the DJI account that you log in with on the DJI application for flight operations. So whatever you're using or whoever you're creating the unlock for, make sure this is the DJI account that they'll be logging in with. If they do not have a DJI account, you're not gonna be able to add them. So the uh, person will need to go to DJI.com, click on the person icon in the top right and create a DJI account. And then after you add the pilot, you'll see the operation complete notification in the top right. You can also download a template. Same idea here if you'd rather fill it out within the Excel sheet. First column would be DJI account emails and the second column would be the corresponding name if you'd like to have a shortcut for seeing that within the portal or an easier access point than the email address. And then upload that Excel file. The final tab in the user center is for user feedback. If there's geozones that are missing that should be there or there's a geozone that should not be there because the location may be closed or it doesn't exist anymore, you can provide feedback within this section. So at this point, we've completed everything within the user center. And the nice thing about the portal is, is all this information is saved to your account. So you don't need to enter the flight controller serial number or DJI accounts every time. You can easily come back to the user center and edit any of this information as well. But now continuing on to creating an unlock request, we'll tap on unlock request here within the bar and tap on the new unlock request button. At this point, you'll be prompted to choose an unlock request type. The geozone unlocking would make sense. For example, if you have some commercial operations you've been approved for at a power plant and you have authorization, you're just going to want to unlock the entire geozone. So you could just select that geozone for your unlock application. Or if you're scheduling a authorization zone unlock ahead of time, you could click the zone unlocking here as well. If the request is just for a portion of a geozone, maybe we're near an airport and there's a certain section you have approval for, it's gonna make sense to draw a circle or a polygon with the custom unlocking option. After selecting either one of those though, the first option is to input the basic information that's all auto-filled from the user center. And then within the devices and pilots, text input fields. If you just click on the field, it'll give you a list of flight controller serial numbers to select from. You can select multiple drones of the same type and then multiple pilots. The blue add device and add pilot links just allows you to add a device or pilot to your database within the portal. So that will be added and saved on. And then you can select them from the drop down menu when you click on the text entry point itself. So if you selected zone unlocking initially, on the next screen here, you'll see a map. The top left within the map, you can search for a certain location. The bottom right can zoom in or out with plus or minus. And then the layers, you can change the map layers to satellite or different map services. But essentially you want to find the geozone that you're looking to get unlocked on the map can click on it and then it'll be added in the bottom bar so you can see it has been selected. You can do this for multiple geozones if needed. And then you'll add a time range with a start and end date. Then add an unlocking application reason and upload an authorization file per the provided guidelines. I can see it needs to be in English or Chinese, no larger than five megabytes, PNG, JPEG, or PDF. And it's ultimately showing that you have authorization for flying within the area selected. If there are special circumstances, such as a flight being indoors and regulations don't apply, or the local regulations you're working with don't necessarily coincide with the geofencing, just make sure to specify that within the file and show that 
for the personnel who will review the application. If you selected a custom unlocking, you'll be able to draw a polygon circle or specify certain coordinates. For polygon, you want to click on polygon first, then tap on the map to add the polygon vertices. That requires three to five points. You can tap on the inside of the polygon after creation to edit it or delete it, and tap and drag on a point to move it. And then same idea as the geozones, you'll see the polygon added at the bottom of the map. Same idea for the circle. First taps the middle of the circle. Second point setting the radius of the circle. And then if you select the import button, you can select circle or polygon, give the zone a name, and then add specific longitude, latitude for either multiple points with a polygon or just one with a radius for the circle. You can also download a spreadsheet template using the tabs on the bottom, add information for circles or polygons, and then in turn import that to the portal. After you've created your custom unlock areas, add a date range, altitude, and authorization file per the guidelines. As we talked about before, file needs to be PNG, JPEG, or PDF. And these applications are processed anywhere from about 5 to 30 minutes. You'll see on your unlock request page, the current status of your unlock request, you can sort them by waiting for review, under review, accepted, or rejected. You also receive an email notification regarding your application. You can also click on the view link there within the unlocking certificate itself to view the operation. After the unlock request has been accepted, it is important to remember that you do need to download the unlocking certificate using the respective DJI app and enable it. You can find the instructions at the link here within the video description. And we'll also cover that in more depth here within the next video section. One note here on unlocking certificates as well, you can kind of think of them as 3D shapes with the defined in location as height. So we just looked at drawing a circle on the map. If you download and enable that unlocking certificate, the drone is going to be able to take off and fly when it's within that shape, but if it's outside the shape, it's not going to be able to take off. Thus, if you're not utilizing the unlocking certificate by being in that area, you're going to want to turn it off so the drone is still able to take off and fly. Looking at the workflow as a whole here, circling back from our first video, check out the DJI FlySafe map to determine if there are any geo zones at the flight location. If there's no geo zones or a warning zone, you can continue with operations, authorization zones. You have the option for in-app live unlocking or the custom unlock through the FlySafe portal. After completing a custom unlock for the authorization zones, restricted zones, or altitude zones flying above the height of the altitude zone, you'll need to download the unlocking certificate to the drone and enable it, and then you can go ahead and continue with operations. So that concludes things for the FlySafe portal and custom unlocks. We'll cover downloading those certificates and any troubleshooting steps you may want to know during the next section. Thanks.